Thank you. All right, we're going to get to our story now about the climate scientists. We're talking a little bit about carbon dioxide and, of course, global climate change and that we obviously need to make a drastic adjustment within the next 10 years before conditions worsen. We've heard this before. Now, there are still skeptics out there who think it's not real. So I asked the climate scientist from University of Washington about that. She says she's not, not sure why there are skeptics out there when all the research points to one thing, but she says roughly 97% of scientists globally all believe that climate change is real. So she's taking that data, turning it into audio form to help create more of an understanding of what's going on. There's no legitimate debate in the scientific community about the fact of human-caused climate change. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere right now is higher than it's been in the last several hundred thousand years. And it's going up. And we need it to stop going up, and ideally to go back down. How scared should we be? Well, fear is a really normal reaction when you start learning about the impacts of climate change and you start seeing not only that it's changing weather patterns and that it's changing ice growth and ice melt, but that it's also going to cause effects on uh, the spread of infectious diseases, vector-borne diseases, right? That is alarming. But we need to have courage, right? And one of the most hopeful things and hopeful signs is that we have the capacity and the technology ready to transition rapidly to clean energy. The only thing we're lacking is the political will. I want these iconic climate records like the rise of CO2 in Earth's atmosphere or the melting of sea ice or the warming of the planet from temperature records. I want those to be sticking in our memory. I don't want them to be something that you glance at and then you forget because you've got to, you know, Life. Something else, right, right. But these are, we need to expand our perspective and be thinking about how we as a species are shifting the planet and what we can do to protect what we have. And so one way to do that is by making this really important information a little stickier in our memories, a little bit more uh, engaging and maybe emotionally connective for us. Now I study um, something called data sonification. It's a jargony word, but I make climate soundtracks. So I take iconic climate records and I turn them into music. This is the music she's talking about. You're listening to the sound of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere roughly six decades ago. Notice the lower tones. They indicate lower levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. And I do that because we almost exclusively use visual communication when we're talking about science. You know, we show charts and graphs, mm -hmm. and that's great. But when we're talking about something that is a planetary crisis, we should be using every toolbox we have and engaging all our senses. So I do that with music. Contrast that to more recent years, and you can hear the constant buildup. And then what advice would you have for a future generation? I am really hopeful and excited about the engagement I'm already seeing from young people. I think young people just should feel empowered and recognize that this is their fight. Climate change will disproportionately affect young people because they're gonna live longer. And we know that the effects, the, the things that we do now to limit it are gonna pay off in their lifetime. The flip side of that is if we don't make those changes now, those responsible changes now, they're gonna be the ones suffering as they get older. We need to be able to communicate the science in a way that is, um, that is helpful, but that doesn't lead to that feeling of overwhelm. And part of that means that we have to acknowledge that there is this emotional dimension to learning that we're changing the planet and that it's not a good thing. So did you hear that video game at the end? Yeah, That's wow. like now. So there's so many data points that the tones are way higher. So it starts off like mm -hmm. and then So anyway, if anybody's oh curious gosh. about listening to the whole thing from beginning to end, I think it's only like a minute and a half or something like that. Um, I've got a link. I'm going to kick you back the link. All you got to do is text the number on your screen and then the, text the word climate. But Julie, who's from University of Washington, who I interviewed, she's talking at a TEDx Seattle event this weekend. So if you're interested in going oh. to that, you can listen to her at TEDx. That same link will kick you back the information on how to get there.